selections in Pixlr are a critical part of editing a photo. And there's three basic selection options that you have. There's the marquee tool, the lasso tool, and the magic wand tool. First, I'm gonna show you how selections work, and then I'm gonna go into the details of each of these tools and why you would pick one over another. So first, the marquee tool. The marquee tool is like creating shapes. So right now, I just have a rectangular shape there. Um, I have some settings there I'm gonna remove. So I have a basic rectangular shape. Now what selections actually do, and this applies to all the tools, not just the marquee tool, but if I say I have a selection here and I choose to use the move tool, I can move that selection and it's like I'm cutting it out of my image. There may be, I mean, obviously you can see some applications you know, that, that I could use that for. Another application that I have is if I wanna draw something within that selection. I'm gonna use my brush tool. And if I draw around, notice part of my brush is outside of my selection, but the paint only occurs within my selection. So it's kind of a nice little feature if I'm trying to paint a specific spot without going outside the lines. And uh, it, you can also use the fill tool, by the way, on that. So there's a lot of tools you can use. So that's just the basics. I mean, that's just scratching the surface of what you can do with selections but i can tell you this if you want to use photoshop or in this case pixlr because we're on the web um, you're going to need to know how to use selections so the selection tools that exist the marquee tool first there's two options you can select to do a rectangular marquee or an elliptical marquee elliptical is the same thing it's just going to be a circle so instead of making the uh, or it's going to be round instead of making the square now you have a few options you can do a no restriction aspect ratio or fixed size right now i've been using a fixed size that's why when i click it just creates the same size circle every single time my uh, restraints are set here so i have a circle that is a 250 by 250 circle right there. Um, if I wanted to change to an aspect ratio, right now I have a one to one. This allows me to adjust the size of my selection, but that ratio will remain the same. In other words, it's gonna be a perfect circle because it's a one to one ratio. I, if I change this, it'll make instead some kind of oval looking thing, right? Instead of my perfect circle because I have a two to one ratio now. So depending on what you're trying to do, that can be a useful feature. Finally, you can have no restrictions, which allows you to just freehand draw, um, select your um, picture based on the, the, the shape that you have, whether you're using the um, rectangular or the elliptical. Now, last thing I wanna show you on the marquee tool is the feather option. So really quick, if I have a selection right here and I choose to, oh, excuse me, and I choose to use a brush and fill it in, it just makes a block of yellow for me, right? Well, now if I select the marquee, I change my feather option to 45 and then I make a new block. Notice first, all my edges are rounded. And if I come in here with my brush and draw, you can see it kind of creates a soft edge on my rectangle. Um, so that's the basics of what it's going to do. Now to give you just an idea of what feathering looks like, here in this selection, I had a feathering setting of zero and this I had a hundred. And then um, you can see the transition from zero to a hundred of that a feathering effect. Now with the marquee tool, we're not gonna cover this feature yet. We'll get to the anti-alias feature later when we talk about the magic wand. So that's the basics of the marquee tool. I'm gonna get rid of my yellow boxes and go on to the lasso tool. The lasso tool allows you to freehand a shape around your image. So I can make a rough cut out of an image if I want to, or I can uh, get really detailed. Now, there's two options with your lasso tool. There's the freehand, which is what I was using just now, which makes it a little bit difficult to keep, you know, basically keep your drawing or your cutout within the line, keep your selection within the lines. But there's also the polygonal lasso tool, which allows you to, when you create your selection, using clicks, you can cut around your image. Now you'll notice it, it might it might not be there we go it might not be a perfect selection um, and of course I just did this really fast but if you were to zoom in you could get really close to those lines and create the just the image or just the selection that you want. Now that is a nice feature um, and and you can also uh, add feathering and anti alias in there. Again, we'll talk about that feature when we get to the magic wand which is what we're gonna talk about next. This is the tool that especially those that first learn how to use Pixar or Photoshop or photo editing tools in general, they really like this tool because basically what it does is it makes selecting easy. If I select anything with my magic wand, you can see it 
basically create it, it, it creates a selection for me. In fact, I'm going to turn this setting off. I'll get to what that is later in a moment, but um, it's, you can see how easy I was able to, I was able to really get into my, uh, right up next to that Ferris wheel without actually selecting the Ferris wheel. And all I had to do was click. Okay. So this magic wand tool is really helpful for cutting things out. Now, when you're using this magic wand tool, sometimes you may want to select more. Like for example, when I select here, it selected a lot of the sky, but I still want to select this guy up here. So you can use this control and the shift key to uh, manipulate your selections a little more. So notice when I hit shift, there's a little plus button by my magic wand. And if I click, it doesn't deselect the area I already had selected in replacement of what I clicked on. It actually just adds to it. So if I come over here and click with that plus, it will add it again. Um, if I want to deselect, I can hold the control key and that will subtract things out of my selection. So that's the basics of how you use the magic wand. Um, but one thing, I one more thing I want to show you. So I want to show you how the tolerance level works. And the best way to do that is with this gradient image. So if I select this using my magic wand, I select somewhere within this gradient image, you can see it selects, it, there's a tolerance. So I selected right here and my, and basically what it selected was so much this way and so much this way, because the pixels on the right side of where I clicked, it accepts so much, you know, it, they're similar, but they're not exactly the same, but there's a threshold there. Once I go, once the pixels start deviating from what my original selection was or what my, wherever I clicked was, that's where the selection ends. Now to adjust that, I can use this tolerance up here. So if I come up here and right now I'm on 23, I'll change it to 143 and watch how that changes. Now when I select, ooh, maybe that's too big to show this example. We'll go down to 56. So now when I select with 56, notice it selects a much bigger area. If I take this over to my Ferris wheel and I have my tolerance set high like that, Notice when I click up in the sky, whereas it used to only select a portion up to here, now it selects the entire sky and even some of my Ferris wheel, which I may not want it to do. So this tolerance, you want to be aware if that if you have it turned down, it's going to select less. If you have it turned up, it's going to select more. Now, last two features I want to show you. So I've been promising you to talk about this anti-alias feature. Basically what this does is it kind of reshapes your selection. It's a little bit difficult to explain, but instead of, uh, it, it kind of shaves down, it gets, it shaves down your pixels. Um, so you get a more detailed defined selection. Whereas if I had this not checked, um, when I select my tools, it, my, my shape isn't going to be quite as, uh, cut down to the pixels. Basically, um, what I usually do is when I select, if I'm not happy with what I got, I'll, I'll, uh, mess with my settings a little bit and then we'll see if it, you know, gives me what I want. So that's what I recommend you do as well. Now, the last thing I want to show you is this contiguous feature. Cause when you're using the magic wand, uh, the magic wand, this can be really helpful. So I'm going to set my tolerance back to 21 and I select this corner up here. Now, let's say I in this Ferris wheel, I want to select all of the sky, okay? So I don't want to select the Ferris wheel, just the sky. So if I uncheck this contiguous uh, feature right here, and I select, notice what it selects instead of just that little corner that I had. And the difference is, um, when I have this checked, it's only going to uh, select pixels that are connected to my original selection. So when I have this selected here, I click here and it's only going to select pixels. I, I clicked on some pixel like right here, right? And so it's only going to select pixels that are next to it that are the same and then it will follow a continuous line. So even though a pixel over here might be the same color or might be within the tolerance level, it's not going to select it because there's not a direct connection. Um, in this example though, where I want to get the sky in all each of these little uh, Ferris wheel pieces right here, but I don't want to have to click in each one of these, it might be good for me to uncheck that box, select, and then go ahead and select everything in the sky. So now you notice it has, uh, it's selected all of these little details within my Ferris wheel. So that may be an option that you want. Now, the last thing I want to show you in regards to the selections, because we've really covered all of the selection tools, but the last thing I want to show you, let's say in this example, right now I have pretty much all the sky selected, but maybe for the project I'm working on, I want to select the Ferris wheel instead. Well, I can come up to my edit 
toolbar, come down to invert selection. What this will do is it will deselect everything I have currently selected and it will select everything I currently don't have selected. So it kind of does the reverse. So right now I have all of the sky selected and none of the Ferris wheel. Well, there's some of it because my selection isn't perfect, but it's mostly the sky, right? If I select invert selection, now I pretty much have the Ferris wheel selected. So just to give you an idea, I'll cut out the Ferris wheel real quick so you can see what it, what it cuts out. I'll put it back and then I'm gonna invert my selection one more time and then cut it out again. So you can see it's basically done the reverse cutout of what I had previously. And that's the basics of how you can use selections in Pixlr. Hi, thanks for watching another Web Tools video and supporting our channel. After the video, if you still have a question about something we talked about, be sure to leave a comment or hit us up on our channel. And of course, if you're interested in learning how you can use your browser to its full potential, don't forget to subscribe below.